So, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, two very two very exciting crew today. Zoe, I gave you the back forever ago. I'm going to give you yours back to you. We're holding it from you. I was holding it hostage. All right, so you gathered some data in that lab. So, let's talk about it for a little bit. You're darn right I did. Everybody uh, should have an idea what we're talking about, but Mason, Mason may be a little lost. But these are good notes to have. You're going to need these. So this is proving the point of what I'm saying. It's like what happens in the lab can't be recreated. Those are the best days. Those are the days everybody wants to come to chemistry. Yeah. So uh, there is an idea on here. You guys asked me about it whenever you looked at it. Like what in the what 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 is this percent error? Mr. Hall explained to you percent error. Kind of like a simplistic definition so you have an idea of what this, like what percent error is talking about. Percent error is how far off you are That better not you know be that email. That, that, that better not be that email. Oh. You don't come thinking right now. Right? You know what I'm thinking? Like, what, go ahead. Tell me what I'm thinking. Huh? Oh, I'm thinking more than that. You're oh. gonna fail. You're gonna. That's not what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. Right now, there's an English teacher that's teaching the word and the definition for late, and they're saying zeros in the Mr. Hall's first period chemistry class. Yeah. Let's come to time, on time, okay, everybody? All right, 718, the bell rings for you to come see me. Come see me. What? You need these. So, the percent there is how far off you are from the. True value. <laughs> this is kind of a calculation way to tell you how good you are at something or how bad you are at something. I'm pretty good. So, when I was in college, we had great time in my lower level chemistry labs. Wonderful time. They had us calculate percent error once or twice just for the fun of it. Then I went into my analytical lab, and in our analytical lab, you actually got graded off your percent error. For whatever Ooh. percent error you had, that came off your grade. Is that far or four? Let's say it, Riff. What? Far. Four. Let's just say it. Mr. Hall got really good really fast, because Dr. Wong did not mess around. This is another funny story. Dr. Wong. I'll have to tell you that some other time. So percent error is how far off you are from the true value. How wrong you are. Now, there's a couple things we're going to talk about today. The formula for percent error I actually have on the lab handout that I gave you. Now I'm going to give it to you here. So percent error, this is equal to... <coughs> <coughs> The approximate measurement minus actual measurement and it's the absolute value of that, Mr. Hawk. Divided by, can we do some science experiments and make me grow my hair back? Uh, no. Why, why did you cut your hair? Okay, so my aunt scheduled me for somebody to get a trim, just my dead ends cut off, and I was like, you know what? I want to go down my shoulders. And she got me up there and I was like, okay, I want this much, I want it to like flow back, hey, I want it to look pretty. She's like, oh, I got you, son. She tied it up in a ponytail and snipped, and, and the, when I felt the snip, I was like, oh, good God. Oh, good golly wally. I'm, I'm in for it. 
And then I saw my ponytail fall to the ground. I was like, oh! And then she just went ham. She That's was, like almost the Did you show. tell her that she messed <laughs> up? Because you should have. She, she just went crazy. And There's like, nothing you can't She turned me around the first time and I was like, okay, I look kind of pretty. And then she turned me around the second time and I was bald and I was like, oh! <laughs> And I was like, oh yeah, I like it. I like it. I feel like he should go today to a barber and get a skin fade. That's yeah. what Gabe was saying. Go ahead and oh, just go bald. Honestly, if you're this short, just go ahead and go. Go bald. Try it. Do it over. <coughs> go bald, Mr. Hall. Good night, cook. I don't care. Oh, yeah, get the heart shaped in. I was going to make me not look not a lot younger no, for some reason. I think you should make that work. <laughs> I think it makes you look like you're no, trying, to to trying to be younger. Trying to be younger. Just a little little Eli. No. I'm only 16. I was just a whole Whoa! 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 Yeah. My mom doesn't even know about it, by the way. Can't wait to show her. My mom said it looks terrible and she won't look at me anymore. Well, your <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's here's what I need you to get, okay? What is the approximate measurement? The approximate mm. measurement. The secret was This measurement is one from the lab. Yeah. The actual measurement from this recall, what it should be. Yeah. Isn't there that type of like relativity though? Like, what if it is what it, what it is? We're gonna get to that. You said like imminent. Right? So whenever you look, whenever you look at this situation. So let's say we had some data from yesterday. Like, give me a piece of glass where you want me to use. Beaker. Okay, so we use the beaker. So let's say on a beaker trial. I'm like, if I use a small. Beaker, I'll be more accurate. So let's say the volume of water I chose. Excuse me. I did 50 milliliters. And let's say the mass of water I obtained was 47.8 grams. So I can use the identity of density and the value for water is one gram per milliliter say that the mass I should have be 50 grams right I can say that because for every milliliter of water it's equal to one gram so now I can calculate percent error for this trial so we're seeing error. What? Uh, is that 50 grams, Mr. Hall? Yes. Percent error. So the approximate measurement, the one from the lab, so it's absolute value of, I got 47.8 grams. And I'm going to subtract from that the 50 grams because that's what it should have been and I'll divide that by 50 grams and multiply by 100 to give me a percentage. It's a lot of grams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. There we really? If I were to scream at the other class to shut up, would I get in trouble? Yes. They're just so lucky that I'm tired right now. So we get a 4.4 percent error. Oh, Mr. Hall, Mr. Hall, you're forgetting your units. No, I'm not. This is a percentage. Besides that, look what happens. Gram minus gram is gram. Gram over gram is well, that just cancels. <coughs> Wee. This is like calculating grade with. Do you want me to bring my bunnies while I go tutor? No. Oh, I know you want them too. Yeah, I'm, please I'm, don't. I'm, so we get 4.4%. Is this good or bad? Bad. That's pretty good. That's bad? 
That's, that's, that's really weird. Said? That's the worst one I've ever seen. That's amazing. If that's okay. bad, then we're in trouble, guys. That's, that's really beautiful. Wait, what do you mean we're, we're in trouble? Well, I mean, he's almost three, or no, he's two, two 2.2 two grams two. away from what he should be. That's a lot. It's, it's a scientific really big. Uh, you, How about you stop? Here's what I'm going to say. If I was in analytical chemistry, whatever the final grade I got on my whatever work I turned in, I just lost 4.4% off of it. Guys. Okay, depending on the situation, that could be... Life that could be really bad, but, but... Just get good at everything else. Uh, let's is, say it this way. Mr. Hall got to the point to where he did not like seeing a number in front of the decimal, 100% error. Yes, he lied. Um, I'm doing the math right now. Is it... How normal is it to have a 0% error? What did you use? A pipette and the Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so you are... Wait, did you use the pipe bed or an RMI flask? Both. Both. Both I got a 0% on. You got an RMI flask in zero? I don't know what we did. Yeah, we actually did. We, cause, uh, we guessed right. exactly right. Here's the way to look at this. This is bad. I actually Googled it. Now, this is the reason I use this and talk about this. Inside of chemistry and inside of labs, inside of science classes you have, there's a very special thing we talk about. <coughs> it's called the source of error. The source of error is the thing that caused the error. Well, let's say it caused the percent error. Dale. To be off. I smell meth. <laughs> the thing that causes your sense of your off. Really? Really? Can you help yourself? Mason. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> I smell, um, I smell roses. It's <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> blue head sanitizer. Hey! <laughs> I'm literally going to get kicked off of YouTube because of him. Uh, you'll be fine. Just so source error is what caused the percent error to be off. So it's what gave it the percent error. There's a key to this. Bad or bad in this room. <laughs> Never. It was in purple. If you guys did the measuring. I just used the human. Liquid <laughs> right. Error. <laughs> That's in purple, Mr. Hall. I was wrong. It wasn't us. <laughs> Never. So as Dale was already going for, human. this is the thing, whenever you're talking about a source of error, it's never you. It's not your lab partners. It's not the people in the lab with you. Do not look and go, uh, yeah, well the problem with this is we're new and we've never done labs before. You Sorry. messed us up. It's our fault. It's Dale. Truthfully? <laughs> Whose fault is it? Dale's. It was, it was my fault. Yeah, it was Dale. <laughs> he owns up to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, agree. Wait, I agree. I agree. It was my fault. But human could mess up, though, right? Can, but you like can't. He just started it. spitting in the beakers and then weighing Why them again. Not? Because this yeah. is the thing: is if it's you're going to go be a scientist and you're going to have a PhD, <laughs> if you're going to come out and have Someone's some idea you're great. trying to prove, <laughs> and you're trying to prove it, and then next thing you know, boom. Oh. You come out and the, and the numbers and stuff are off. You can't look and say, "Well, guys, this actually is true, but I'm the problem." Hi. So it was the it's speaker's me. fault. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not accepted. It's not so. Fault. Just do it's better. It's you have it's better it's excuse. Yeah. So I'm going to help you. Okay. So perfect example. I did this trial. I got a 4.4 percent error. My beaker. It's 4.4% off. Question. What do you think the purpose of a beaker is? It holds substance. That is a secret, Mr. Hall. Trade secret. Hold thing, keep a thing in it, transfer thing from thing. <coughs> Beakers are literally used just to have things in them and to transfer from one to another. Yeah. They hold liquids. That's what they do. If you look at the beakers, they literally have a percent 
that they are allowed to be off. Like literally, it's the point. Like, why in the world would they ever have? You can't really see what that means. Why did you not put it on that one? You see the plus minus five percent there, my finger, my index. What you see with that plus minus five percent let's say this beaker it's guaranteed you're going to be left or right five percent so doesn't that mean that that's that's great yeah <laughs> so why is it bad because you're off what were you trying to do well, the beaker's off not you me. were trying to <laughs> capture 50 grams of water what did you do i did about 47.8. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I wanted you to find what was the most oh accurate pieces of glassware in the lab that we use and we deal with. So when it comes to that, if I wanted you to get me 50 grams of water, are you going to use a beaker? Heck to oh. that. No, no, no. Why would you not use a beaker? Because that would take forever. Like so that. That's not now look at that side. There's a percent off of it. So what would the source of error in this situation be? The beaker. The beaker's the problem. The beaker is not. The beaker is not accurate or precise. So question you, if I asked you to get me 50 grams of water, but I could only you're only allowed to measure it by volume, what's the piece that you would use? The pipette. No, wait, not the pipette. The, 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 the graduate is the air on the pipette. No way. Yeah. What are, I don't like all these Spanish no, words. Got, I, would I don't know why I said that. Mr. Hall. I said it because it says 50. We got 10. Zero percent. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> if I'm doing it, here's what I'm using. A pipe. I didn't get zero percent. No, we didn't get that. Why am I going to use the pipette? What is this pipette good for? Measuring. Measuring what? Precise water. Precisely what? Fifty. Fifty what? Grams. Grams. It's measure volumes, not mass. Milliliters. It measures 50 milliliters. That's the only thing this is used for. This is it. It's kind of boring. You cannot use this for anything else. This is precisely made to give me 50 milliliters of the solution every time. That's why you have the little line. And that's all you have. I want to ride that like a, like a motorcycle. It's kind of more like a... I'm happy he wasn't here for that. <laughs> I would have lost a pipette. Too. Maybe a Glass funnel's okay. Mm -hmm. a pipette, I would have had to step out in the hallway and cry. Is that the one that makes the pretty sound? Yes. They all make pretty sounds. I want to hear the pretty sound. No, you don't. Can you really make a really pretty sound? Can you like play a video of the pretty sound? No. It gives me PTSD. <laughs> My first year of teaching here. If you lost all of them <laughs> in the war, they're all gone. Uh, what's the percent? The chemistry teachers that were here before me left the pipette over on this side of the prep room and where the cabinets are. Slightly sticks up past the cabinets. I'm in here writing a quiz. That morning I'm here, I got here at 5 30, I'm writing a quiz. Yada yada. And it's like 6 14. And my uncle, that was on his last year of teaching, was next door to me. And he comes in, and he goes in, and opens the cabinets. And as he opens the cabinets, he opened the cabinet, had the pipettes in front of them instead of moving them. All you hear. And I'm sitting there typing the quiz, and I go. So when I did that. He looks at me and goes, oh, uh, oh gosh, oh man, uh, 
I am so sorry. And I walk in there to look, and I'm estimating that he cost he cost my lab about five hundred dollars. Yeah, for opening the cabinet. Love the man to death. Was not happy with what he did at all. Oh man, still have PTSD for today. So, do you understand percent error? Absolutely. Can you calculate percent error? What is source error? Dale, shut up. What's source error? Uh, it's what not me. Error, and it's, it's what, never human error. It's what's causing percent error. Should you ever tell me it's you? No. It's still no. choosing the wrong There was a <laughs> professor at Parsons University that literally, whenever I was a TA for him, and we were grading lab reports for him, he said, whenever they give you source error, if they mention themselves, take 20% off their grade. Yeah. So instantly, those kids went from being able to have an A to if they got that, they had only had a chance of getting a super low B. They never had perfect ones. So, yeah. What if I stuck one up my nose and went to breathe through it? That's a good it's a piece of glass. Yeah. You're making me really nervous to let you in lab. Like, I'm, <laughs> like we're going to have a serious conversation right now. I'm fine with your personality coming out in the class, but Mason, you're like crossing the line. Because you're like goofing off, and you have me super nervous that you're going to get back in my lap and you're going to goof off. No, no, don't worry, don't and you're going to be, no, this is the part where you listen. There is stuff back there in that lab you're going to deal with that if it gets on your skin, you're permanently scarred for life. Don't worry, Mr. Hall. Mason, you're going to listen. You're going to stop talking, you're going to listen. I got. Because this is a serious conversation. I'm being very nice right now. I'm cool with the personality coming out, but then there comes a point that you're not going to goof off in my lap. Don't joke like you're going to goof off in my lab, because if you do, I'm going to set your butt in the seat every lab I do, and you'll write me an APA formatted paper for your lab grade. Don't worry, Mr. Hall. I'm going to glass in your I Mason, I mean it. Don't joke about it. Okay. Right. So just we just So I'm gonna leave you with your lab handouts. You guys can actually work and calculate the percent errors if you like. You're gonna find something. What is the most accurate, precise glassware we use? The pipette. Pipette. What comes second? The Burette. Burette. Whichever My one results do board. not lie in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, they don't. But let me tell you what my results say. I know what Erlmeyer flasks are used for. Erlmeyer flasks are used for something very special. I have a solution with something in it and I need to mix it. This is what Erlmeyer flasks are made for. Where it becomes narrower at the top, as it spins, if I did this with a beaker, it would really, literally run up the cup and come out. Here, where it becomes more slender, it pushes the liquid back in. So literally what I can do is I can mix it. That's what these are for. What's the percent? Plus or minus 5%. What was it on the beaker? Plus or minus 5%. It's the same thing. Why? What's the purpose of an Erlmeyer flask? To mix. To mix. What's the purpose of the beaker? To hold. What's the purpose of a pipette? One measurement. Number two is the burette. Why is the burette two and not one? Is the burette very accurate? Yeah. Is it precise? Yeah. Is it as precise as the pipette? No. I can use the burette to get multiple different measurements. From there, <coughs> graduated cylinder falls in. Graduated cylinder is kind of like the middle ground. If I need a certain amount of volume, they're good at getting me that volume. They're kind of accurate, sometimes you can fall and hit the number. 
All right? It's kind of what you're looking at. Now, from the lab to... Why do you act like I should know that? Because it's the funkiest looking one. Well, well, it's the pipe. The pipe the funkiest looking one. Well, that's just like no, you're at the funkiest. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one the wild card. Yeah. 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 I like that. That was my favorite. It reminds me of like a. Oh, it's a baby. I shouldn't have just touched that. Now you're going to die, Mr. Hall. Hey, don't be so. He's dying! Oh my god, camera, his skin is peeling everywhere. <laughs> camera, help us! Camera, help us! He's dead! But as soon as I picked that up, I instantly remembered what was the last thing I had in it. And that is? And that, and that was the last thing Mr. Ball ever touched. Oh, wow. Before he died tragically. Wow. No one may, I probably already ran water through it and diluted it down, but that's what we say. Alright, so. Electromagnetic spectrum. You guys have seen it. Now we're getting back into the contents with that. I gave you those formulas. We'll use those formulas, get some work with it, but I need you to understand piece and components of something. There are certain types of electromagnetic radiation. And we're going to talk about them. All of my measurements are correct. <laughs> Your guesses are wrong. All of us got different. Have fun. Guys, we gotta get our. It's midterm. That might have been my fault. Midterms. We gotta get oh, um. Boy. Study guys for the midterm. Oh, okay. I thought we had to wait. I was there. Study guys. You study guys. I thought the teachers actually sent by God. Yeah, our biology She's teacher. She's so sweet. Yeah, she assigns like two things and. She's like, all right, guys, copy up your notes. Like, Our first quiz was right. open notes. She's actually so sweet. <laughs> we've only had that one quiz, I think, right? Yeah, we've only had one quiz. She managed to do we virtual have, labs. We have a yeah. full semester project where we make our own animals. And, like, we can make a documentary about it or anything. It's so much fun. A documentary? Yeah. Have, have you done? Video have you been working on that? No. Can you give us anything else to do? Ridiculous. Can we do an animal documentary? I think that's what I'm doing. Stephanie would No. Why? Alright, electromagnetic radiation. I want to talk about each different form of this. Here's the ones you got. Radio, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. There is a another one that you can add on there if you want. It's called uh, cosmic rays, but nobody really gets with those. So. Let's talk about radio waves. What are radio waves? Secret. Do they like, they um, come from electronics. Do the waves. Like radio. Can't see them. Not deadly at all. You're fine. Nah. Oh no, it's dead. I hope I would be Have fine. you watched my videos? I was here yet last year. <laughs> In my class? She's been in the vents. I've, I've been the no. <laughs> just trust me on this. I am trusting you. It's just for you to say that. I'm like, does she know where I'm going? Well, I just, if you I see like a radio wave, wave it it will, will, you will, will, your body will instantaneously combust into a... I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry, actually. Waves of... Radio waves. 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 used to send out radio frequencies slash signals. Which I will go ahead and ask a question, so he already answered it for us. Yeah. Deadly. This is a yes or a no. Here's the way of looking at it. 
can it kill you? Can it lead to your death? Yes. Can radio waves do this? No. My radio is going to murder me. Your strong radio. Every time I hold it up to my ear, it whispers something new to me. It's like somebody's talking to me. Here's the way to look at it. Radio frequencies are being sent out all the time. They're being sent out all around us right now. Are you dying? Yeah. No. The radio waves are up. You look at it. That's not what's what's the problem. Now we go to uh, different uses we can have for it. So what are some things we can use radio waves for? Radio communication. That pretty much sums it up. Radio slash communication. Let's go group zero. That's pretty much what we do with it. Group zero. That's what I'm talking about. Now we get to every kid's favorite one. Uh oh. No, that's the first one. Let's go to the second. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Microwaves. Not the machine, but the electromagnetic radiation. What are microwaves? Small little tiny waves. The heat waves. Here's what microwaves are. The waves of electro magnetic. Radiation that vibrates water molecules. Question to you. Is this deadly? Yes or no? No. no. It's too small. No. I, nope. No. Unless you are a hot pocket. Nothing, nothing. Unlucky. That was a joke. Unlucky. I'm a hot pocket. Things I really find funny, I don't like that. Oh. Cool. Good joke, Mr. Hall. That Thanks. just made me appreciate it. That didn't make me laugh and made me really hungry, actually, so now I'm like, like, What are some uses for radio waves? Mm -hmm. Come on, them for. You create the young minds of America, you oh. come up with everything. Hot pockets. It was for the hot pockets. What are we doing with hot pockets? Eat. Eat. <laughs> we'll eat them. We'll throw them in the microwave. We'll turn them on. What's it do? The microwave is called microwave because it uses microwaves. This is awesome. What do you think genius? Holy smokes! I've enlightened you. You're like, wow, my mind is blown. I'm telling everybody chemistry is like so enlightening. It is used to put up heat using the vibration of the molecule. So use it to heat up food. Like a hot pocket. By the way, just helpful little tidbit of information for you all, because one day you'll probably go to college and you're going to have a microwave and you're going to have instant mac and cheese. Make sure to put water in it. Yeah. I was an RA at Marshall, and first year south for four years. I did not know how many fire alarm calls I went to mm -hmm. for two things. One, people heated up mac and cheese and they never put water in it. Number two, my favorite one, girls that straightened their hair. And the temperature was really high. How do you not know how to make it? I say throw up, throw up, No, it doesn't. You don't. They do go. 
they on drugs. It was my favorite thing. One time, the only one time I went to a call and they opened a the microwave and smoke pours out of it and they left the cheese packet in it. And I'm like, <laughs> Imagine you're late to Mr. Hall's class, but you haven't even got ready yet, and you're starving and haven't ate all day. <laughs> and you rip open your mac and cheese, and you're like, I'm going to throw this in the microwave and then go get ready. And you throw it in there, turn it on, go get ready, come back, and your mac and cheese is just on fire. That's how I expect it's happening. I do physics. Now, there has to be enough of y'all signed up for it, though. Can you do this though? I think I'm going to take physics. I got some physics or else I won't I would be so cool <laughs> taking both. No. Alright, so yesterday, I'm just going to pick up where we were yesterday. We are left off. So radio waves, talk about radio waves, electromagnetic radiation. used for communication. So these are the ones like we're sending out receiving signals, CB radios, uh, radio towers. I don't know if anybody actually uses like a standard radio player in their car anymore. My car is so old I still have one. I heard the radio waves like travel forever. Like it's like in space. I heard like the, the dude was like, the, we, we sh never should have made radio waves because aliens will hear them and come in down and kill us or something like that, you know? Any day now. Any day now. It'll happen. Hey, Dev, can you eat and take notes? I'm, I got, I'm taking notes mentally, Mr. All. He has a photographic memory. I have a photographic memory. Know how the quiz will go for him. <laughs> I've, been, I've been lying to you. I just haven't been taking pictures in my brain. Now, I, now I'm going to start. All right, so you look at radio waves. We always ask this question, deadly, no. yes or no? No. No. That we know of. Yeah, wait till, wait till the aliens come back. I was going to say, technically, they're going to hear a bunch of gibberish, and they're going to be like, hmm? If aliens come back, attack the Earth, and they look and they say, hey, wait your radio waves? <laughs> Then you all can come to me and look and say, In your face, Mr. Hall, you're they, wrong! They really I'm like praying Taylor on your Swift, downfall. So they came down on us. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. I mean, that'll be my response. It's, the downfall of civilization is taking place, and here it is. You're looking and saying, In your face, Mr. Hall. I'm like, really? All right, then you got different uses, like what we can use the radio waves for. This is the part of the class that I like getting to because you get to talk about like, life and things we can use it for. So... Use it. Communication. Radios. Aliens. Signals. Radios. Radios. Uh, communication. No. No. I mean, all of these are. It, this this list can keep going and going and going, but I mean, you get an idea of what the radio waves can be used for. Then comes every teenage person's favorite one. Microwaves. Yes. Yes. Now, there's the important part. We're not talking about microwaves that you like put your food in and use. We're no. talking about microwaves is what your microwave that you put food in and use uses. It's a bit complicated. One of the I think they I think they grammared. <coughs> microwaves. Electro magnetic. Radiation that Electromagnetic radiation that vibrates. Where's 1025? Uh, what room is this? 30 is English Hall. It's definitely not down in this hall. 1025. Yeah, it's over there somewhere. Who's that we're like? I'm going to say check up around the art room. You might know what the art room number is. Uh, I bet it's Jessica's room. 
What is Jesus? Do you have a map? What is what? What is Jesus signal radio station? Do you have a map? That's what, that's what we use for radio for. That's what radio for. I think you're right. I think Strace is good. All right, electromagnetic radiation that vibrates water molecules. Uses for radio. Oh, the uses of them. To create a What is it? How do you spell uses compared to uses? It's the same word. Well, that's dumb. Yeah. How else do you spell it? Hey. Easy. This is a chemistry classroom, <laughs> not even. Dead. Nick. Unless. Don't be that. Uh oh. You might be a hot pocket. Like we should have tried something different. Yeah, well, what if I put myself in a microwave? Yeah, literally. What if right. we make one big microwave? Would it fry all the water in us? Would not fry all the water. What will actually happen would is, it hurt? Will, there actually is yeah, tools say, I mean, like that fire. riot police use. Some riot police have these. That they send out microwaves and it hits. And what happens is it hits people and it vibrates and excites the water molecules to where they create and release heat. It becomes very uncomfortable to where people will stop doing what they're doing. Is there like a microwave? Oh, so like, yes, I've seen that. If, so cool. if we stuck it on you and held you down where you couldn't move, then yes, the water molecules are going to go away, How which would lead die? to... <coughs> so if we made so one big microwave deadly, and got in it... It's not dead. Deadly if you try hard enough. Did you, have you heated the... Uh, can you think up in a microwave lately? Well, ready, or I mean, like, gamma rays are deadly in small proportions. Yeah. Okay, hypothetically. It's at the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, but they're not, they're not deadly if, like, if I just have a little bit, you know? But, like, do I have a tolerance for it? I'll just yeah. put, like, a little bit. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about uses. He takes a gamma ray pill every day and blow it up. If I have metal fillings and I get microwave, will I explode? <laughs> <laughs> Heating food is like big use, big common use. What if? Okay. Uh -oh. Sir. So, so yeah. So, could so why do metal things blow up in the microwave? They do not blow up. Dude, why do they so catch fire? Have you ever? Have you? Ever, I, I would know. love to tell you, but can I ask you a question before I do? Yeah. Are you okay with waiting for maybe two weeks? No. No, Mr. All, I can explain it to him it's, right now. It's not an easy thing to explain. Yeah, it is, Mr. All. I can, but I can, we well, actually microwave. talk about it in this class. The microwaves bounce can. around when they hit the metal and it causes them to fry. And the microwaves are not directed on one thing, so they start bouncing around the metal. energy. And since they bounce around the metal, that yeah. way it causes the you're, pro you're probably, honestly, you're probably going to see it next week. Tin foil. We'll literally talk about it. And then the fire set that I was holding. Okay, so there is our first two electromagnetic radiations we're going to talk about. The third one. Infrared? Wow. Like like, a like like the vision. Like the uh, light? Yeah. Actually. So like infrared is electromagnetic radiation. Work, and I was like, there's no school right? Like, no, right. really, really do I got a dentist appointment, then I got my orthodontist Ooh, appointment. Good, I'm happy you put them all on the same day, so yeah. then you're yeah. not missing my class. Uh, infrared. It's really hard to define it more than just a type of electromagnetic radiation. So, is infrared deadly? Probably. A little bit. Nah, nah. Possibly. A little bit. Nah, infrared's not. Infrared's not. Anything, right. anything, yeah, anything, anything below Maybe. the color, anything below the color isn't. Anything above the color is. In colors, we good. Yeah. Yeah. No. Now that's that's a bit pricey to see a lot. Uses for infrared. These are the ones that the guys typically get really excited about. So different uses that we deal with is uh, infrared is used. 
so it used night vision. That's so awesome. The real big one that everybody likes is thermal imaging. That is pretty cool. So like everybody gets excited about it. Another one that's not very common around but you can use it for is heating. Your body is putting off heat which is seen as infrared. Why do thermal scopes work? Thermal scopes are looking for heat. That's why they can see things we can't. So. Even if you, I, I go with the example every year of talking to people about uh, Call of Duty. All right, you play Call of Duty, you can use a thermal scope, you can see the outlines of people running through buildings and stuff. Hey, awesome. Sorry, I was getting paid for two drinks. Do what? Good. Does it pay well, Mr. Hall? Yeah, it pays pretty good. Did you happen to be paid fifty-three dollars? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Did you happen to be paid fifty-three dollars exactly? <laughs> we have our ways. We have our ways. Just right now. We have, yeah. And we have infrared cameras. No. Well, yes. What about yesterday? yesterday. <laughs> so you got talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't say who, but he said fifty three dollars. So. <laughs> yeah, he was like, my aunt just paid fifty three dollars to get tutored. I'm still gonna fail. <laughs> he is not gonna fail. <laughs> yeah, he was joking, but well, the funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe he's got a point. Hey. He pays fifty three dollars to sleep. Yeah, in your house. Uh, yeah, it I'm just so worked out sorry. better. <laughs> I don't care. The worst part was is he knows where I live, and he literally walked past my house. <laughs> I don't want to say he walked forever past my house, like literally to the point that I was getting in the vehicle to go find him. <laughs> yeah, I got an offer because there was a freshman, a freshman's mom that wanted some tutoring, and uh, for algebra. So they asked me if I would do it, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'll give it a shot. I do math. So, so thanks for your... Like, yeah, wait, I get, I'll do it for I free. Like 50 bucks for tutoring a fifth grader a few years back. That was the best moment I thought about maybe I could take this thing with like B just like, you get like high. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get the talk. You're going to get ass I'm going to get the Mason. <laughs> Mason, Mason, I didn't see Mason come back. <laughs> after. He was never the same man. That, that tutoring wasn't tutoring. <laughs> These are the All right. Next from here is the girl's <laughs> personal <laughs> favorite. <laughs> So ladies love this one. Oh, I have a question I love one about yeah. infrared. What? Oh How does night vision? She still work? wanted the. Light I don't. I don't. Know that. So what happens is your body is releasing off uh, infrared. Oh, you night vision. Yes, for night vision. Yeah, I'm sorry. So what happens is it takes in, uh, collects like smaller sources of light to amplify it. It's not so much as it's being exactly used with infrared, like the night vision that you're used to, like the green stuff. Yeah. That's just using really um, amplifying small amounts of light. That's why, like, if you see them flip a light on or something, the person goes blind uh, for a second because all that light is amplified into their eyeballs. But the reason I use night vision as an example for infrared is because you actually can use uh, thermal night vision. I wish I had one. If I had one, we would all put it on so that we could see things. Visible light! Form of electromagnetic radiation. Of all colors 
broke down through the rainbow. Boy, G. Indigo, violet. Please tell me we don't have to remember that for the test. I'll cry if I it's to just the the rainbow. Rainbow. I've tried. I've tried, I've tried Dale, to remember it. Dale, can I help you with something? If you have to memorize it for the for the quiz, it's gonna be really sad. Because guess what you get on your quiz? Oh, <laughs> okay. You get an electromagnetic radiation, an electromagnetic spectrum that has the visible light spectrum on it. Just make sure you read it backwards. Can you point out indigo, the blue? It's a blue purple. So dumb. That's what we actually, like guys, would call blue. Yeah, it's blue. It's like, blue. perfect example is Eli's shirt is blue. Yeah. Okay, Eli's pants are blue. Now that we've put the two blues together, a guy looks and says, well, his pants is dark blue and his shirt's a light blue. Okay. You again? Yeah. We're done. Now, women right now are super offended the fact that I just said that. They have like classifications. Like, that sky baby blue <laughs> floors. I know exactly what that means, too. You tried to play that perfectly. Because of, uh, because of, uh, yeah, I know. You know Can you give me So, um, <laughs> I'll tell you this there is a, a lab that comes up we can do, and all the kids typically love it. It's called the Flame Test. It is not your next one you'll do, but it'll be the one after that. Young men. Men like it because you're burning sticks. You're burning things. Yes. Women like it because yeah. there's pretty colors. We get to burn sticks. And we get to look at colors. Okay, All right, visible light. Is it deadly? Yes. No. Severely. Nope. What? Unless. No. You tell her. <laughs> I thought you were being serious. <laughs> <coughs> Hypothetically, could I'm gonna leave that one. I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna stop there. I'm not. I'm not no, putting Mr. my foot. No, nope. nope, I ain't finished now. Hypothetically, could you look. be hit with such a big ray of light that you die from color? <laughs> Not impossible. I mean, if you looked at the sun for too long. I mean, who, who has tested that, though? All right, uses that we have for it. Seeing. Pretty Seeing. color. Looking. It look cool. Eyeball. Looking. Making our world. Pretty. We need it to see. Pretty. I love pretty world. Slash color. <coughs> Wow. I will stop there today because I don't want to get too in-depth with um, the next three because there is a change. And I always love talking about the change. You keep doing it, All right, so hopefully it's the actual you have an idea. Once you're done. So, I brought this in to you because you need to know how to calculate percent errors. You're going to calculate percent errors throughout this class now. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, you have used a pipette to collect 50 milliliters of a solution whose density is 2.6 grams per milliliter. Do you use a balance to find that you have collected 127.8 grams of the solution? Calculate the percent error. Two pieces of information we need for this. First piece of information, we need to know what we collected. So, what was collected? Which was the last 127.8 grams. Second piece of information we need to know, what should we have collected? So, what should have? To do that, we have to use the identity of density. 
So density is mass divided by volume. In this case, I need to find mass, so mass will be equal to density times volume. I'm a little concerned, by the way, because whenever I plug this in, I have a density of 2.6 grams per milliliter. Times the volume of 50 milliliters. Just to make sure I'm right, and the other person isn't. I'm right. That's 130 grams. Not 103 grams. So, yeah, I, 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 fi I, I figured it out. I did it wrong. I, did, I redid it just now. But anyway. All right, now to calculate percent error is not that bad. Percent error. Wait, do you guys enjoy your extended weekend? Yeah. Not one bit. Not, not one bit. I worked like, I'm sorry. I missed y'all, but even if y'all would have been here yesterday, I wouldn't have been here. I actually was uh, gone to a church helping install new sound equipment. And man, was it a late one. I left. I loaded up and left at 7 a.m. And I got back home. Whenever I walked in my front door, it was 10.30 p.m. How many ways are there? One was at 10, the other was at 2, and then the other was at 4. What do you do with them those that time? I don't know. All right, so percent error. You look at this, what we're going to end up with. It's going to be the absolute value. Here's the thing. Why do we do the absolute value to start with? It doesn't matter which one you subtract from which you're still going to end up with the same answer on the, uh, on the numerator. So percent error. I always like to pick the bigger number first. So we should have had 130 grams, and we'll subtract from that the 127.8 grams. Yeah. And I'm going to divide by, what number do you divide by? That's the actual measurement. What it should be, the actual measurement. So what should the measurement have been? 130. I know you're wrong. 130 grams. 2%. And then we're going to get a percentage you have to multiply by 100. 2%. Here's the thing. Percent error is never negative. Percent error is never negative. That's why the absolute value is at the top. Man, 1.623%. Okay. I don't know why you got 98. I'm you break say, this down. Okay. Oh, oh, snap. Okay, what I did was, it's a good thing you came by. I got caught in it makes sense. Why would no. you? Well, I mean, you know, why would you? You're dumb, Dad. My morning announcements are taking more than all of my class. Yeah. I need to ask one of these favorites. Yeah. Um, yeah. He sniffs you like, I don't care. What? This guy sniffs really good. He sniffs really good. Really good. Mr. Hall's all about Mr. Hall's a problem. He's a, he's a, he's a problem. He's a Dale, did you spell density? I'm turning white. What's happening? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? All right, so <coughs> question. What? Um, the number on the bottom, I thought it was supposed to be the actual, oh. the actual estimate. What it should be, the actual what it should be. What's happening? But it should be 130. Oh. Oh, I'm dumb, Mr. Hall. No, you're not. Darn right you are. Oh, no, don't. Mr. Hall, you are. I need, to throw, throw, I need to throw everything I know about this out because I'm wrong <laughs> about everything I've said so far. No, I hope the notes I'm copying are right. <laughs> Good luck, pal. I might want to choose somebody else next to copy my. This is one grab. The evil Questions here copy. on this problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. How are we feeling with percent error? 
I'm on. I'm I have no, no idea. This, this is the hardest thing we've done. This. How many of you got this? Hey, yo, you got this. Give me thumbs up. Oh yeah, Mr. Hall. Thumbs up. Okay, sweet. It's good. I honestly was wondering if I would trick you with the density of 2.6. I was like, are they going to use the density value or are they going to think it's water? So, very good catch. All right. Now, I want to go back to electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. We have three types of electromagnetic radiation to finish discussing today. These are the fun ones. Especially the last one. So we've talked about radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays, and visible light. That's how we ended off on Friday. Now, let's talk about ultraviolet rays. You've probably heard of them before. They're actually known by UV rays. Most common. UV rays is a type of electromagnetic radiation. Yeah, below group. Oh, yeah, baby. I only got this real good. Now, when you look at. That's the only one I have. the reason they went with it is ultraviolet is because it comes after violet. So it's like how to remember how they go infrared, where's the visible light spectrum start? Red. Where's the visible light spectrum in? Violet. Then you go to ultraviolet. Yeah, but why when I have UV flashlight it looks purple? Because uh, it's very similar to it. You actually cannot see ultraviolet. There have been some people that suggest and think that other that some people have been able to see a little bit of ultraviolet, but you can't really see ultraviolet. Yeah, my you hand. can see you can see the bulb and some light coming from the bulb, but the actual ultraviolet rays not so much. You do see see a color from it, like I can show you a UV bulb back in the goggle storage. I think you might have been standing back there when I pushed the buttons and I showed it. So you see a color, but you're not actually seeing the UV rays. Because if you actually look at it, you see the bulb come on, you see this light radiation from it, but then you don't see a bunch of it. Mason, Dale, have y'all like settled good now? Can like, go go roll? Yeah. Okay, so Mason, why are you on your phone? Uh, I think my mama's sick. Sorry to hear that, Mason. Mr. Old, um, Eli has a question. Okay. <laughs> what? What's the question? <laughs> um, is a UV light, or is a, um, a black light a UV light? Uh, no. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. I would like to. Black light is what they can be. I think it is. Hotel rooms. Yeah. Hotel room. yeah. But also, it's not. You're the manicure, you know what I'm saying? It could just be a purple light. You know, <laughs> you know, I don't yeah, I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. I can go with that. But then again, no yeah, other light makes up. stuff glow, so it has what? to be a UV light. That's what light what does. It's stuck on me, bro. That's called your skin. <laughs> no, look, that's not skin. Bro, that looks like foundation. I don't know what's <laughs> happening to <laughs> that. I don't. Yes, black lights emit ultraviolet radiation. I'm a genius. But they, the UVA that gets released, you actually can't see it with the eye. That's why I like when they use it and it makes things illuminate. Oh, gosh. I want to talk about it, but I really can't right now. You have to. Oh, my God. I can't talk about it right now. I promise you I'm going to talk about it. Eli, when you look at me, keep asking all the questions. Aww, so cute. 
All right, UV rays, deadly. Yes or no? Okay. Probably, uh, maybe a little bit. No. Yeah. Every Here's above. how we classify if something's deadly or harmful. Yes. Everything above Can the it lead to death? Uh -oh. UV can cause like skin no. cancer. So. Absolutely not. It's harmless. The Maybe sun would never. My grandma uses it all the time. Can my grandma like kind of? But does the cancer cause the dead body to be like? Wait, are we continuing the waves? What cancer? That is yes. Shoot. First, the cancer in the lung. I think we know the cancer. Bottle of bleach. Oh. Yes. Answer here is yes. UV rays are deadly. The reason for this is they can cause cancer. Yo, probably just to the ladies in here, because y'all probably the only one that's ever done this. Anybody in here like a tanning bed? My mom has a tanning bed. You know it. Wow. Can you tell? How do tanning beds work? You get in it, you make that, you press the button. They fry your freaking skin. The mom put her skin cancer. Get off of it. I'm obtaining. My mom told me if I use this, it's handy because my back is broke. This is so true. You have to be like, browser. It's like you keep getting cancer yourself and kind of just like, so that's cancer. I mean, dude, cool. It's like you got cancer from your son. You don't want to have cancer from my face. Hey, we need to step outside from paying beds. There's like my super white, white, white people in the room. That's racist. Don't yeah. put me with the same skin tone. <laughs> Sorry. Jeans are jeans, bro. They are what they are. Sorry, dog. White people united. <laughs> All right. This is the This is why I never leave the house without my son. It takes six now. Question you in the summer. Who is your public enemy number one? Humidity. <laughs> Wait a minute, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remember the generation I'm dealing with. Okay. Public enemy number one to gingers. If you're gonna go outside for two hours in the sun, what are you we doing? Don't die. Get you die. Get Dishman, where's he at? Can Mr. you repeat Hall, the question? You ate that in front of me. <laughs> it's the sun. Right. Like you go outside. You go outside. Okay? You're gonna go outside for two hours. In the middle of summer. Yeah, we put on sunscreen. Why you put on sunscreen? So you I ain't trying to get sunburned. Because the sun to protect from UV. The sun the sun's rays. So you're trying to protect yourself from the harmful UV rays coming from the sun. When this is taking place, the same aspect's happening that's happening inside of a tanning bed. When you get into uses of UV rays, there are uses to these. Somebody's in my house, Mr. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Dale, put the phone up for a second. So, like, in my father. Anyways, I was going to say something. So, uses. Melanin, I think. Melatonin? <laughs> Who's so got true. some melatonin? Tan bed? <laughs> What's something very popular? <laughs> That has recently came out, thank to COVID. Mm. What are we talking about? Mm. Are you talking about vaccines? Um, I'm going to know you like. Oh. Uh, oh. The gun's really popular. The thermometer. The gun? The hey, temperature that gun. That works off infrared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's UV. A gun? A temperature gun. That's yeah. so cool. Like how we do. How do we do the cleaning, cleaning box? box. What on earth? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think What's I know what you're talking about. It kind of gets all like a purple light and stuff. Yeah, because the UV bulbs inside of it. You can do your nails with that. That's too extra. I actually think they're using UV bulbs. That's not extra. That's like 20 miles away. Yeah, it's like 20 miles away. It feels warm. It feels warm. It activates the gel. Yeah, they yeah. kill your skin cells. Uh, I don't know. I think that's why you're supposed to wear such a Technical. Okay, put down. Go right ahead. What's wrong with you? I didn't ask you. <coughs> I didn't ask you. Exactly. What is happening within the tanning beds that gives you the effect that you desire? Because let's be honest, you know, prom is eventually coming and, you know, you got those ladies that are like, I look fine when I look like a burnt leather sofa. <laughs> 
That's me for real, for real, Mr. Hall. Yeah. 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 So they look about all want to be all burnt and crispied up, right? I'm quite literally fried. Actually, child of the home because black plate is actually in this. I'm a little bit of 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 She's more dreamy. I I can't help it, okay? She's slightly more dreamy. No, no we're talking about what we're talking about. Show the end. We talked about how he had to change him. Uh, all of a sudden, meth pipe. How he had to change him with gas pipe from like nine to four, and that it was hard. No, that's straight up for a long time. That's what you're saying. Show for a long time. Focus. Focus. All right, listen. I am not an artist, okay? You want an artist drawing? Can I yes, draw it? I'll draw it for you, Mr. Hall. God, leave, Mr. Hall. Man, this sucks. Dude, you look like you're drawing music lines. A road. Every good boy does just fine. I mean, does what? fine. What? That is it like a, a robot. straight line, though. His a bone. <laughs> That's Mr. Yeah. Hall. Ah, Are you calling me skinny? <gasps> oh my Jeez. God, it's a finish line. That's so smart. <laughs> And the fourth oh. one dies. Wow. Mm. Oh, this is not wow. Mm. And turns into a bone. The first three layers of the skin, and then what's underneath our skin? <coughs> My meat. Um, bone. Still bone. Oh, wow. bone. <laughs> Inaccurate. In UV rays work like this. This is so. This UV is, rays. This is touching my heart, Mr. Hall. I'm touched. <laughs> Penetrate to the skin. What do women use tanning beds for? Skin. To get pretty. They pretty want to make tan. themselves darker, right? Because they're convinced that if they weren't as white as a sheet of paper, that someone would be attracted to them. <laughs> I think you I think don't got to be the edge and the I think I can pull off both. First off, ladies, let me tell you this. Okay? If you find it necessary for you to have to go hit the tanning bed three times a week for someone to look at you and think that you're beautiful, find somebody else. That's what I'm saying. Period. That's not the one. Ted, I'm not Ted for you no more. I can say that because I love my wife very, Mary very, very much. She is absolutely gorgeous. And she is as white as white can get. If you wanted to look up white girl in the dictionary, they would say C. Mary Hall. Okay? You just dropped the biggest on, diss uh, ever. What's wrong being white? Oh, oh. You know. Like, I'm ready. You're right. I'm just... Hey, let's, let's calm down, guys. It's just you wait. It's not get too crazy here. Second that camera goes off, you're you dead. So <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, Kayla. Really? You got me. What happens here is the UV ray comes in and hits the layers of the skin. Can it get to the bone? No. No. Doesn't have enough energy for that. But it gets to the skin. It will. Seriously. What's inside of our skin and our skin cells? The first layer of skin is dead. Means nothing. But the second and third layer does. So what happens in here is in our skin cells, we have a very special thing. Um, maybe you've heard about it, maybe you haven't, you know. DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Oh, you didn't have to say all that. You didn't have to do all that. We got a blabber mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Deoxyribonucleic acid, very simplistic, known as DNA. DNA is what? It's that what's in my skin. Tells your body. It's what it makes how to make a body. It's to make your cells. It, it really it's it's what tells your body how to make a body. It what makes you you. Thank you. It's what gives you, it's your genes. It's what makes you who you are. You know, wow. the difference between wow. being tall and skinny, short, not skinny, <laughs> kind of average height and fat, you better not be pointing fingers at me, Mr. Hall. 
Out of all the DNA you have, every bit of it, out of all the DNA, how much of the DNA matters? That is super it's important. Like 10%. Like all of it? No, 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 it's less than that. So it's what like you're saying is, if I every get rid of single of bit of egg, egg, I'll be fine? Yeah, it's like 100%. 98% are just it's features of It's really not that much. A lot. It's not that serious. Like, but it's 2%. Like but it is it's a crazy amount. It's like 98. I think, nine, I think it's 99. It's 99. It's 99. It's 100. 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 One thousand percent, guys. We were off by one percent. We weren't very <laughs> yeah. long. One percent is super important. What's about the ninety-nine percent, man? Dead weight. It won't make you slow us down. It's just bull crap So the the other ninety-nine percent of it is just there. It's so like markers and stuff. I'm saying the one percent. The one percent is literally looking and saying, "Hey, that's not the protein. 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 That's not the can I get rid of Very important. the 99% and be fine? We don't want to mess those up. You can still cause issues. <laughs> I have a plan. I have like three genes. I'm going to erase What them. happens if you mess with the DNA? You'll die. Imagine you become severely deformed. <laughs> if you mess with the DNA and you alter the DNA, can't. <laughs> All you have to do is alter the DNA is what we say in the science realm. It's called a mutation. Now, before anybody walks out of here and says that they're going to become the Wolverine, you're not going to turn yourself into a mutant. How hard would it be? How, how, how could it generate? generate. How I can I feel it changing it. inside I can't wait of to me. There. So, at, you alter the DNA, it equals mutation. Mutations can lead. Mr. Hall, how many rib cages do you need? I have a set of five. <clears> I mean, you need one. So but the middle bones bones in the <laughs> I have five rib It can lead to cancer. <laughs> Is it a guarantee? No. Truth of it is, our bodies have, I don't know who you have for biology, so I'm going to break it down very simplistic. Our bodies have checks built within them. There are checkpoints throughout the replication process of the DNA that literally checks to make sure everything is good and knows where everything should be and how things should be. It's set. They don't get changed around. If they do, the checkpoint looks and says, yo, we got a problem here. And it will not allow that cell to replicate. Can I catch that? If we allow the cell to replicate after a mutation and it continually keeps growing, that's what cancer is. This is what causes the problem or the tumors. It's uncontrolled growth. Because our cells will keep replenishing and keep growing, but then they'll stop. This is why on your skin, when you get skin cancers, you see growths. What do people want to do, doctors want to do, whenever they want to check and see if you have skin cancer? They find a spot on your body that they suspect is skin cancer. They cut it off and they send it to a lab. They won't cut Why? Them. They want to check and see if that's skin cancer. And then if it is, they look and see what stage it is and they start coming up with a Way to check you out, make sure everything's good. Here's how this happens. UV rays come into the skin, and it's not the first layer, it's the second and third that matter. Because they're good, healthy, living skin cells. The UV rays go all the way into the nucleus, into the DNA, and they literally go in, they poke holes in it. Why is it that whenever you stand outside, like that's super white people. Whenever we stand out there in the sun and the UV rays are really high, we get burnt. It's killing your skin cells. What's being left behind that gives the heat is all the energy that's been transferred into you. So whenever you get the sunburns, that's what's taking place. Whenever you lay in a tanning bed, 
Can you get burnt from a tanning bed? Yeah. Yes. It's the same thing. That's why they set them on timers. Is Mr. Hall telling you that you should not go do a tanning bed? No. Chances are you're going to be fine. But the reality of it is, can it be deadly? Yes, it can cause skin cancer. Not to be messed with. It's up to you whether you're willing to take the risk or not. Now let's move on. Mr. I'll have a question. Why? Are you endorsing cigarettes? No. Are you sure? That's what it looks like, yes. Mr. Hall. But the chances are low. Well, it's like UV beds. If I don't use a UV bed... I never bed, said chances were low for smoking. But if I don't use a UV bed and smoke instead... It's You're going to get lung cigarette. cancer. But why which it will then metastasize to your brain and give you brain cancer and kill you. Which one's worse? Skin or... Or lung. Definitely lung. brain cancer. Probably gonna go with the lung cancer. Definitely lung. It starts to not be able to breathe by brain, like 40. Brain cancer, yeah, but then once you the can't. tumor gets big enough, it will like I mean, Dale, head. just saying, there's, there's a point to the skin cancer, you see the growth on the body. To you, when you get tumors in your lungs, you don't see those. No, you just develop a cough and think, man, I got a nasty cough. And you keep letting it go forever, and then finally you go to the doctor and they're like, hmm. You it did. sounds weird. That's where wow, this looks weird. Yeah. And then guess what they'll do? They stick you in a machine that takes an image of your lungs, and they come and they say, "You see all these little dots? These are lung cancer." That's why you're wrong, Mr. All. I have an imaging every time I cough. Okay, <laughs> every single time. I actually have a machine at my house. Right, you guys get the point that all of these are types of electromagnetic radiation, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm not going to break it down and explain to you what x-rays are. I think you know what x-rays are and what they do. Let's talk. Uh, are they deadly? What's you? Do you think x-rays are deadly? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sometimes. Maybe a little pregnant women. Well, the x-ray takes time behind the They wouldn't put you under the blanket. Yeah, the x-rays, so... You know the dentist blanket? There's probably something there. Yeah. They wouldn't put you under the blanket. Maybe we don't get too many of them. It's definitely bad. I got an x-ray in my arm when I broke it, and I'm pretty sure I was fine. So are x-rays deadly? Yes. Yes. Can lead. Cancer. Why do all these things want to cause cancer? Everything can lead to cancer. Why? Because what's it deal with? It deals with your body and what are they doing? These ultra, the electromagnetic radiation, what are they doing to your body? They're poking holes in your DNA. Stop this leads it. to mutations, which leads to cancer. I love it. So here's the thing with x rays. What's the uses of x rays? X ray. <laughs> Images of bone. Here's how x rays work x rays come through and they'll go all the way through. How many of y'all in here have had an x ray before? Cool, right? Awesome. Okay. You went and get an x ray. Let's say I went to get an x-ray of my arm. They lay me down on the table where they have me stand. What do they put on me? So a little chest plate. It's a vest, right? It's a heavy? No. For a vest. A little bit, yeah. It's not Pretty heavy for a vest, right? Why? What's in the vest? Have <laughs> you ever asked these questions? No. I'm a science. It's nerd. like um, I go places. Doctors and people hate me because I ask all sorts of questions. And then it's like, wow. You ever broke a bone? If they tell me to do something, I'm like, okay. I've not broke a bone, but I had to have that big trace before. So they put the best on you. What the best is on you is lead. Why? X-rays cannot penetrate lead, wow. so the lead blocks it out. So why do they put, if they want an image of my arm, why are they putting it on my chest? To protect the chest. 
Why are they want to protect the chest? Well, that's where all of your... That's where all your stuff is, you know? For the heart, the lungs, and everything. So what if you break... Do I want to expose that to radiation if I don't have to? No. no. What if you break your rib or something? Then they'll then they take an image of the rib. Yeah. They just don't want to do it if they don't have to. Oh, okay. <laughs> So there's always a chance that whenever you get an X-ray, like if you break up, like in this case, back. in this case, it is super, super small chance. Okay. Here's the reason why it's such a small chance. How fast do they take the X-rays? Instant. Yeah. It doesn't take. There's little time. things stabbing me when they do that. No, uh, <laughs> they're pushing a button. What it does, it releases X-rays, it hits the image, then from the image. They can look at it. They do it so fast. Why do they look and keep up with your medical records, though? Because they want to know how many you've been exposed to. Because once you reach a certain point, then you start re reaching a risk factor. Yeah, okay. I hate to do this, but anybody <coughs> here watch like medical shows? Okay. Yeah. Okay. For those of you with Grey's Anatomy, I don't know if it's on there or not. But I don't know if it's on like The Good Doctor or whatever. Uh, me and my house, we have been able to so, hey, got filters out anything, any bad scenes or any cuss or anything. All that junk gets filtered out. And whenever we got that, me and my wife decided to watch House. Which made it where we could actually watch it because I didn't have to hear a cussing language and I didn't have to see activities I didn't want to say. So, on one of the episodes they take is they're needing to get something done. They take one of the doctor's badges and they scrape the name off and they expose it to radiation. If you want to know why they're wearing badges, it's not so much that, to let people know who they are, but actually on the badges, there's a color code system. The badges can work differently. Some hospitals, it's a whole badge. Other places, it's just a little dot. But it actually will turn a color if they've been exposed too much. So I want to say that Sydney talked about the x-ray tech goes behind a wall whenever they take the x-rays. They don't stand in the same room. Why? Because they definitely don't need to be getting exposed to tons of radiation. And every time they would take an image of you, if they're standing in the room, they're exposing themselves to x-ray. They go behind the wall to protect themselves. The badges that the doctors wear are there and they monitor how much radiation they've been exposed to. If it turns a certain color, they go, whoa! We gotta get you out here, man. You've been exposed too much. And they do that as a safety feature. One of these are x-rays. What do you see happening from UV rays to x-rays? We've stepped up in what? We've stepped up in deadly. Because now it's like UV rays can't cause bone cancer. Can x-rays cause bone cancer? Yeah. Can x-rays cause skin cancer? Yeah. yeah. They can cause muscle cancer. Whatever the x-ray's hitting, it can do. It's doing the same thing. It's poking holes in the DNA. The same thing's taking place. Let's talk about everybody's favorite. Deadly. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uranium, uranium, uranium. This will kill you. How do we know? Are we I don't used? know. It's made a couple things happen We've throughout history. Like, down. you ever heard of a nuclear meltdown? I mean, I mean, that was a pretty good indicator for us. We don't know what happened. Oh, now, we know don't get me wrong. Are there uses? For gamma rays, absolutely. <laughs> Let's cover this right now. If you expose yourself to gamma radiation, you are not turning into the Hulk. You, you are turning that. into going into a casket at six feet under the ground. Twelve, actually. What about the uh, yes. the guy that the guy's six? I said twelve because like you'd be dusted and like dust gets fermented to the ground. 
a gardener can come by and like shovel you up to make a garden for like his trees. Like fermentation. I, I, okay, anyway. Use it. Power. Power. Nuclear power plants. As in? Nuclear power plants. Or? This is what nuclear power plants are using. They're using the gamma ray radiation to create power. What about now this? there's different ways to do this. But that's a good, good use. Another great use, you know. Japan may not like this. Yeah. Do so. <laughs> yeah. Stop the video. <laughs> There was a race, and the United States of America won it during World War II. It didn't matter if we were the ones that did it or if somebody else did. The, the, the very sad truth of it was somebody was going to create the atomic bomb and drop it on somebody. And we did it. It's sad. But it was going to happen. Besides that, have a great, wonderful rest of your day. Hey! Tomorrow you come in here. We're gonna pick up on working with those equations. It's gonna be a great time. There.